Henrietta Lacks and her immortal cells. HeLa cells are the four immortal cells which were harvested and used to create an immortal cell line for scientific experiments. HeLa cells are cancerous cells belonging to a strain continuously cultured since its isolation in 1951 from a patient suffering from cervical can carcinoma. HeLa cells were the first human cell line to be established and have been widely used in laboratory studies, especially in research on viruses, cancer, and human genetics. Kila is derived from the name of the patient Henrietta Lacks. These are Kila cells, which are the oldest and most commonly used human cell line. The cells from Lacks cancer of cervical tumor were taken without her knowledge or consent. Henrietta Lacks was born in Loretta Pleasant on August 1, 1920, in Roanoke, Virginia. Henrietta Lacks was an African-American woman who lost her mother at the age of four, and her father was unable to care for her and her nine siblings. Lacks' father moved them to Clover, Virginia, where the kids were divided between the relatives. Henrietta lived with her grandfather, Tommy Lacks, in a two-story log cabin. Henrietta shared a room with her nine-year-old cousin and future husband, David Dave Lacks. Like most of her relatives living in Clover, she worked as a tobacco farmer from a early age. In 1935, Henrietta gave birth to her first child, Lauren Sachs, at the age of 14 in 1939. Her daughter, Elsie Lacks, was born. She had developmental disabilities and was described by the family as deaf and dumb. On April 10, 1941, Henrietta married Day in Halifax County, Virginia. Later that year, their cousin, Fred Garrett, convinced them to leave Virginia for Maryland so they could work in the Bethlehem Steel at Sparrows Point. In this first picture, we can see Henrietta Lacks, and then Henrietta Lacks and David Day Lacks. In the black and white picture is the Bethlehem Steel at Sparrows Point, and they lived in Virginia, which is why that picture there is there and then the cabin where she lived with her grandfather and this is her family tree which we will go into it in the next slide on the far left we can see Gladius Lacks she was Henrietta's sister and she was one, one of um, she didn't approve the marriage because she felt that they would be a bad husband um, then you can see Henrietta Lacks in the middle and David Day Lacks next to her. After that, you can see her children, Elsie Lacks, David Jr., Deborah, and her husband, and then their children, and then her other, and then you can see some Clover cousins. Basically, this is her little family tree. Henrietta Lacks continued. Living in Maryland, Henrietta and Dave had three more children. David, Sonny Lacks Jr., Deborah Lacks, and Joseph Lacks. After Henrietta gave birth to her fifth child, she was diagnosed with cancer. Around the same time, Elsie Lacks was placed in the hospital for the Negro Insane, where she died in 1955. Everything basically began on January 29, 1951, when Henrietta went to the Johns Hopkins, the only hospital that treated black patients because she felt a knot in her womb. She had told her cousins about the knot, and they predicted correctly that she was pregnant. However, after giving birth, she had a hemorrhage which her primary care doctor tested her for syphilis, which came back negative and referred her back to John Hopkins. There, her doctor, Howard W. Jones, took a biopsy of the knot in Henrietta's cervix for laboratory testing. Soon after, she was told that she had a malignant epidermoid carcinoma of the cervix. In these pictures, you can see the picture of the John Hopkins Hospital which was the only hospital that treated back patients. Then 
next the next picture is Elsie Lax, which is Henrietta's older daughter, who was um which had developmental disabilities and she was the one called she was the one that was called deaf and she the, the family were called deaf and dumb and she's the one that died in the Negroes Insane in 1955. On August 8, 1951, Blacks, who was 31 years old, went to John Hopkins for a routine treatment session and asked to be admitted due to continued severe abdominal pain. She received blood transfusions and remained at the hospital until her death on October 4, 1951. An autopsy showed that the cancer had spread throughout her entire body. In 1970, physicians discovered that she had been misdiagnosed and actually had adenocarcinoma. A sample for cancer cells retrieved during a biopsy were sent to Dr. George Gay Nearby's Tissue Lab. For years, Dr. Gay, a prominent cancer and virus researcher, had been collecting cells from all patients who came to the John Hopkins Hospital with cervical cancer, but each sample quickly died in George, Dr. Gay's lab. However, Henrietta Lacks cells were unlike any of the other he had ever seen. Her cells doubled every 20 to 24 hours. HeLa cells remain viable today and have been used in laboratories around the world for the vast array of biomedical research. In these pictures, you can see the plaque that says Henrietta Lacks, 1923-1951. Then there's these pictures that show her in the middle with DNA strands and then some cells and the her, her range in the side of her. I really like that picture. And then it says the immortal Henrietta Lacks. And there's this quote that says, the reason Henrietta cells were so precious is because they allowed scientists to perform experiments that would have been impossible with a living human, which is true. And I really like that quote. And then the next picture is I think I think I really like it because it says the first line of immortal human cells and basically her cells are the only immortal human cells we've had and they've done so much they we've gotten so many medical advances because of it as soon as it was clear that Hila would continue to produce all kinds of research and experiments suddenly became possible for a start Having living cells available outside the human body meant doctors could watch cell division taking place and could also see how viruses behaved inside the cells. The HeLa case has raised questions about the legality of using genetic materials without permission. Neither Lax nor her family granted permission to harvest her cells, which were then cloned and sold. The California Supreme Court upheld the right to commercialize discarded tissue in the 1990 case Moreau and Regent of the University of California. In 2013, German researchers published the gen genome, genome of a strain of HeLa cells without permission from the Lax family. Medical advances. The ability to rapidly reproduce HeLa cells in a laboratory setting has led to many important breakthroughs in biochemical research. For example, by 1954, Jonas Salk was using HeLa cells in his research to develop the polio vaccine, and Chester Saltman, a leading vi virologist, injected HeLa cells into cancer patients, prison inmates, and healthy individuals in order to observe if cancer could be transmitted as well as to examine if one could become immune to cancer by de developing an acquired immune response. In the picture, you can it gives you more examples of how her cells were used in the study of HIV AIDS, cancer research, the effects of radiation and toxic substances, gene mapping, and again it says the COVID vaccine. 20 years later, in the early 1970s, a large portion of HeLa cells became contaminated by other cell cultures. 
As a result, members of Henrietta's family received calls for blood samples from researchers hoping to learn about the family's genetics in order to replace the contaminated cells. Alarmed and confused, several family members began questioning why they were being called for blood samples. In 1975, the family also learned through di dinner party conversation that material originating in Henrietta Lacks was continuing to be used for medical research. This led to the family learning 20 years after Henrietta Lacks' death that they used her cells without consent for scientific experiments. In these pictures, we can see on the top left is Deborah and her grandchildren. Under that, it's a newspaper that says the miracle of Kiva. On the right corner, top corner, it's Henrietta Lacks' plaque and her family around it. On the bottom picture on the right, it's her whole family, the Lacks family. In this slide, we will be answering the questions what ethical issues are at stake in the case of Henrietta Lacks and HeLa cells? Why were the, the HeLa researchers worried about being required to get informed consent? What does this mean? How do you think this might apply in discussions of Henrietta Lacks' case today? Why did the researchers violate Henrietta's privacy by publishing her name? Basically, these are the answers to these questions. The ethical issues that can be seen in this case of Henrietta Lacks and Hila cells are mainly her privacy. They published her name and they took part of her without her consent and without her knowing. The researchers would have most likely been worried about being required to get informed consent because they know she wouldn't have allowed the research, which would mean there wouldn't be any medical advances and no, finan and no financial gain for them. I believe that individuals should have a say whether they want to be part of research or not because it's their body. Although we can argue that if the researchers wouldn't have taken the samples without her consent, we wouldn't have these medical advances which have helped so many people. However, I strongly believe that Henrietta Lacks should receive a lot more recognition for herself and not be mentioned once in a community college biology class and her name be erased from a board after simply saying she was a black woman.